brawn of his own to bully that 640 tons of aluminum, fuel and cargo into the skies? No, it's quite curious. Everyone who sees the aircraft for the first time has asked me that question. It seems there should be a big man, a big pilot, to operate this big aircraft. But actually any pilot, large or small, who receives training could operate the 225. It doesn't require a big pilot. Though a wide palm or an extra helping hand is required to throttle up all six engines at once. Within a year of rescuing the 225 from mothballs, and after replacing cannibalized parts and updating systems, the men who originally built the jet have their pride on the line. Now it was time for the 225 to prove itself airworthy again with a test flight. Twenty million dollars was spent upgrading the Antonov 225. And in April 2001, after being grounded for eight years, the six-engine Goliath powers up and lifts off on its second maiden flight. With the world's largest airlifter flying again, the Antonov Design Bureau makes plans to take every advantage of the 225. The aircraft packs a lot of capacity, with cargo lifting muscle of more than a half million pounds. And its 140 foot long cargo hold could swallow up the entire fuselage of a Boeing 737. Engineers are studying the 225 as a possible way to move 737 airframes to and from various manufacturing plants thousands of miles apart. And the jet is unique in that it can carry cargo on top as it did with the Soviet shuttle. In design now are aerodynamic modules that will ride on top of the aircraft where the shuttle used to. These will carry items too bulky for the 225's immense cargo hold. A month after its maiden flight, the aircraft is certified. It's a proud time for the Ukrainians. In a grand ceremony attended by Ukraine President Kuchma, the aircraft receives its certification for commercial operation. A few weeks later, their hard work pays off and they achieve their goal. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 The 225 flies to France and re-debuts at the Paris Air Show. Like before, the mighty jet fascinates all who see it. But this time, the 225 represents commerce instead of cosmonauts. No Soviet space shuttle is mounted to the external suspension on the back of the aircraft this time. <laughs> Instead, the Antonov crew busily networks in hopes of eventually hauling other countries' goods in their one-of-a-kind creation. And when the Antonov 225 eventually thunders down the runway and lifts its bulk into the skies, 
The people of the Paris Air Show aren't just seeing the rebirth of the biggest jet in the world. They're seeing a handful of workers from the former Soviet Union take flight into a new economic world. The feelings for me are not that much different from the feelings from its first flight. I feel proud for the Antonov company and glad that in these difficult times we have managed to find the resources to put this aircraft in operation again. This jet's resurrection at the air show is an unqualified success. Thirteen years since its first flight, the 225 returns to its former glory. Transformed from a giant of the Cold War to a commercial giant, this wide body is ready for the rigorous reality of hauling heavy cargo around the globe. <laughs>